facts which clearly Trump has been living in for quite some time. He's gone so far as to say, nobody has more respect for women than me. I think his daughter might be the only woman he wouldn't cheat on. The dictionary defines alternative facts as a fancy way to say bullshit. You know who else was really good at alternative facts? My dad. I got hit as a kid when I did something wrong, and my dad had a belt hanging in the closet for those truly special occasions. Every once in a while, the buckle would hit me instead of the strap, and I'd be like, hey, 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 that wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> when it was over, we'd talk, and I'd marvel at the fact that my dad, in the most heartfelt, sincere voice, would say, son, I want you to know, that hurt me more than it hurt you. <laughs> and don't say. <laughs> Pop. That's an alternative fact. <laughs> to this day, getting dressed is super traumatic, and I can't even put on a belt without breaking into a sweat. <laughs> now, in all fairness to my parents, I was always doing something I wasn't supposed to. I had ADD so bad, doctors literally wanted to tranquilize me. My mom had the patience of a saint, and my dad the patience of a barracuda. <laughs> I remember one time, I poured a container of orange juice over my sister's head. She starts screaming, are you kidding me, ma? My mom comes running into the living room. She starts screaming, what am I going to do with you? My dad comes to the living room, grabs me by the collar and yells, get over here. If I were a kid today, all I would have gotten was a timeout. <laughs> they just don't love kids like they used to. <laughs> Speaking of love, New Yorkers really love their dogs. But when was the last time you saw a male dog that wasn't neutered? Call me crazy, but if somebody cut my balls off, I might question how much they love me. <laughs> you could have a 200-pound dog named Hulk, but you cut his balls off, and in one swipe, he goes from the Hulk to Heather. <laughs> to make matters worse, right? After they cut the poor bastard's balls off, they put that plastic collar on his neck. Now, not only doesn't he have any balls, he can't even lick his dick to make himself feel better. <laughs> So recently, I went to my little cousin's baseball game, and the kid at the plate swings and misses, and I'm like, strike three, he's out, because he's on the other team, right? But he stays at the plate. And I'm like, hold up, he's out, right? So the grandfather sitting below me in his track suit, he turns around and says, it ain't the same game you and I played, kid. He swing to the hit the ball. So this kid swings and misses six more times till he finally hits the ball. My little cousin throws him out, but he stays at first. I'm like, hold up, he's out. The same grandfather turns around and says, I told you, it ain't the same game. Either. Everybody gets to run the bases. What? Tell me about it, kid. We're raising a bunch of pansies. No wonder that was the name on their jerseys. So I love to travel, but I cannot deal with babies crying on planes anymore. They really need to have a special section for them. If you ask me, the overhead compartments are extremely comfortable. Have you ever noticed the way they announce the boarding classes are designed to shame anyone flying coach? Now boarding, first class, premier, superior, mint, followed by business, premium, comfort, and so And now for all you cheap bastards, our most uncomfortable and detestable seats await you. Oh, and don't bring a damn thing on the plane, because the overhead compartments are filled with babies. <laughs> As a kid, I went to sleepaway camp whose motto was a place to grow. No wonder I lost my virginity there. When my parents would come to visit, my mom would say, Oh, look at my baby boy. You've grown at least six inches since we saw you. You have no idea. That's my time. Thank you very much.
Thank you.